Things 3 and Todoist are the best to-do list apps out there right now, but which one's better? Or more importantly, which one is the best app for you? In this video, I'm going to show you how I capture tasks, how I organize them, and how I plan them in each of these apps so that you can make an informed decision about which app is right for you. And of course, we're gonna discuss the pros and cons of these apps as we do this. Now, a quick caveat, Things 3 is only available on Apple devices. So if you use an Android phone or a Windows PC and you want your to-do list app to be available across all of your devices, this question is moot. It's not relevant for you. You should just go with Todoist. But if you do use mostly Apple devices, keep watching. I'm going to help you figure out which app you should be using. We've got Things 3 on the left and Todoist on the right. And I'm just going to show you how easy it is to capture a task in each of these apps. So in Things 3, I can pull up a thing called Quick Entry and I can say schedule a phone call with Jeff. Jeff is a friend of mine. I can assign that to today and I can assign that to my relationships area. Boom, that was fast. I'm not showing you how I'm doing all of this, the details. If you wanna learn the details of all of this, I've got full length courses, by the way, teaching you how to use these apps, how to get the most out of it. I just wanna show you how quick this is, both in things and to do So in to do is the, the same feature is called quick add. I can pull it up like this and I can say schedule a phone call with Jeff. And one of the cool things about to do is you can use natural language. So I can just type today and to do is will recognize that and assign it a date of today to this task. And I can then start typing a hashtag and go relationships and just do that boom and now I have the same thing this is listed on my to-do list for today under the relationships it was very fast capturing a task as it comes to you on the computer capturing a task on mobile by the way both of these apps let you put a small little plus button on your iPhone's lock screen which then lets you hey just tap your iPhone tap the plus button and start capturing that task super easy let's say we want to create a to-do related to an email so here I have an email I went on a flight and the airline is like hey do you want to fill out a form for us what I can do is I can actually forward this to my to-do list app so I can say mail to things and I'll send this over and what's going to happen is this email is going to show up in my things inbox to do is has the exact same feature so we'll get back to that in a minute all right another thing you might like to capture is websites so for example here I am on the United States parachute association website because I recently got into skydiving is a new hobby of mine is very fun super exciting and I need to read a little bit about license exams okay so let's say I wanted to create it to do and what I'll do is I'll grab the URL and in things I can say review the USPA website on license exams and then I can put the URL inside the note. Now I could go ahead and assign this to an area, but I'll just leave it like this and save. In Todoist, there's a more elegant way of doing this. I am currently in Chrome and there's a Todoist extension for Chrome. And if I open it, it looks like this. And there's Todoist extensions for all major browsers, by the way. If I scroll to the bottom, there's a link that says add website as task. And if I click on that, I can just say review and then hit that page and then boom, okay. Now if I go back to Todoist, what I'll see is I've got this little task sitting right here and it has a link, a clickable link back to this page. So I find that really handy. I'm gonna remove this from my today just because I don't wanna see it there. It's really easy to capture web pages, particularly to Todoist. Now, in the meantime, while I've done this, in things, the email that I forwarded now shows up in my inbox. So here's that email with a link to give feedback and it's, it's showing up right here. So this can be really handy if you're often creating to-dos from emails. Now, I will say that Todoist has a bunch of extensions that things doesn't. So for example, Todoist has extensions for Slack, for Microsoft Teams, for Gmail itself, for a bunch of other apps that let you directly create to-dos from messages that you may have received in those apps. And that's something that things won't do. You'll find yourself manually creating tasks more often. Another big advantage of Todoist is that it supports file attachment, which things does it. So for example, let's go over to a project right here. Let's call it get my USPA B license. This is again related to skydiving. Now I want to get a certain license called a B license and there's a list of requirements and I want to figure out what exactly are those requirements. And to do that, I need to refer to skydivers information manual, the SIM. I have a PDF file, but in things, there's no way to attach that. In Todoist, however, what I can do is go into the task, add a comment to it and click add a file. I could also add a voice memo if I wanted to, but in this case, it's a file. I'll go find the file on my desktop and just attach it to the to-do and then click comment. And now the next time that I'm looking at this to-do, hey, the PDF is right here. I don't need to go searching for it in my file system. So this is very handy. And if we were keeping track of points, I definitely give a point to Todoist. Anyway, that's capturing. Let's move on to organizing. The way we organize our to-dos and projects is more intuitive in things than it is in Todoist. Here in things, we've got this wonderful structure of top level areas and projects that sit underneath. For example, here I've got my business area. This is all the things that I want to do for my business. And I've got inside this area some tasks, but I've also got projects that live inside the area. So a project is just a collection of tasks that contribute to a joint outcome. For example, here uh, I'm switching platforms for the courses that I sell, okay? That's something that is a defined project. It has a start, it has an end. At some point, it's done. The area itself, business that it lives in, is sort of an ongoing area of responsibility that I have. 
I have my business, it's gonna be that way for a long time. So you see that there's kind of that distinction. And inside a project, I can go into a project and see all the tasks that are listed in there, right? So that's really handy. And to do is there's just projects and you can nest projects underneath each other. So you can kind of create the same thing, but it's not exactly the same. Here I have the top level business project and I have a bunch of to do's in it. But what I cannot do here in things, if I look at the business top level area, I will see both all the tasks listed inside there and the projects that are part of this area. So my business projects, I can't really do that here in Todoist. I can show my business tasks, but I cannot also see these projects here other than in the sidebar. It's just a tad more confusing. It ends up working out the same way, but I like this way of thinking in things where I'm like, hey, I've got high level responsibilities, admin and finances, business, fun and trips, health, home, etc., And I have a bunch of tasks and projects that live underneath these just a little harder to set up in Todoist. Now, one of the nice things about Todoist is you can view your projects in many different ways. So for example, here, I'm showing this as a Kanban board. So for each YouTube video that I'm working on, I can assign it to a specific category. So for example, earlier I was writing, now I am recording it after I'm done recording it. Whoops, um, go away. Scrolling is sometimes hard on the Mac, man. Um, <laughs> move this over to editing, all right? And so that can be really handy and I can click in here and I have a bunch of subtasks, okay? So you have the Kanban board style available to you in Todoist and that can be really handy for projects that move through different phases. Maybe that's something that's relevant for you as well. But even just if I'm looking at any other project, I could even be looking at my today view in Todoist, I can really customize how I view it. For example, I can sort my tasks in different ways or I can group tasks by a variety of characteristics. And that can be really handy. But speaking of labels, you can tag your tasks in things and in Todoist, you can uh, label them. It's called labeling rather than tags, but it works the same way. So for an additional way to organize other than the high level organization that we have here with top level areas and projects, which I've replicated here in Todoist as well, you can tag stuff. So for example, what I can do is inside my business area in things, I can click YouTube and immediately only show all of my tasks and projects that are related to YouTube, of which I only have one right now, apparently. I've gone into this project and I've assigned it the YouTube tag. And the way you manage tags, by the way, in things, is just go to window and then click tags and you'll see your list of tags right here. Now, the way it works in Todoist is you can create tags, but then and the way that, well, they're called labels. You go to filters and labels and you can create a new label right here. So I can create one called YouTube, for example, and I could go ahead and assign that to specific tasks, but you can then create custom views called filters. So what I can do, for example, is here I have a filter that's called today's top priorities. If I just go in there, I can say only want to show tasks that are listed for today and that are my top priorities for today. Talk about priorities in a second. And so you can create lots of things. You can say, I only want to show today's tasks that uh, have the YouTube label, YouTube tag, etc. So you can really slice and dice your data in different ways, which is not something that you can do inside things. Another handy feature of Todoist is that you can share tasks. This is not possible at all in things. Things is purely for you, but in Todoist, you can share tasks. So let's say that I have a project here, switch to Kajabi. I'm going to switch my website and stuff to this new platform. And I want to get an assistant to help me out with this. What I could do is I could click this button right here and just share the project with someone else and just punch in their email and invite them. Now I won't show you how this works because this whole collaboration feature in Todoist is about to be revamped. So maybe by the time you're watching this would be really outdated but then you can do the obvious thing and just assign this task to someone that task to someone else and then you can also go back and create different filters and say hey i want to show all high priority tasks that are assigned to me for example this is definitely a big advantage of todoist things three is really focused on what you need to do and todoist is a little bit more focused on working together with other people as well and working in a team next let's talk about planning your day which is a really important part of task management and to do that we have to start by talking about date which work very differently in things in Todoist. And this is really, really important. Let's say that I am planning to go on my next skydive on July 15th, but I want to wear my own helmet rather than renting gear. So I'm going to create a task in things and it says buy my own skydiving helmet. I'm going to give that a deadline of uh, July 14th because on July 15th is when I want to use it. So I've got to buy it the day before that, right? And I'm going to put that under my fun and trips area. Now, here's the thing. Just because I could buy it the day before I need it, I probably want to buy it a little bit sooner because I don't like to leave things to the last minute. So what I can do in things is I can say, hey, you know what? I'm planning to do this uh, this weekend. So Saturday, 
boom. Now what happens in things is I can go to upcoming, to the upcoming view, which is really nice. It shows me all of my to-dos that are upcoming. And on Saturday, you'll see it says buy my own skydiving helmet. But it also shows, hey, if I don't get around to it on Saturday, that's okay. I just have to get it done by July 14th. This is really great. So things supports start dates as well as due dates. Now in Todoist, this works differently. If I add a task and I say buy my own skydiving helmet, there's only one type of date that I can add. So what should I do? Should I write July 14th here and set the date to July 14th? Or should I write Saturday or sat and put it on Saturday? I can't do both. Now, what I recommend is that you use the so-called due date in Todoist as an intention date. Say it's my intention to do this on Saturday. And again, I can add it to my fun and trips, um, whoops, fun and trips, high level project area in Todoist and it'll live right there. Boom, okay, so you see, and I, I can go to upcoming in Todoist as well and scroll down to Saturday and I can see my task right there. Uh, buy my own skydiving helmet is listed under Saturday, showing my intention to do it then. But what if I don't get around to it on Saturday and I remove the date in Todoist? Now I lose the information about the true hard deadline. And so that's a real shame. And one of the big, big upsides of things and downsides of Todoist is that you cannot keep track both of when you plan to do something and the hard deadline in Todoist. At least not in an elegant way. What I do in the description is I just write down hard deadline July 14th. Okay, but it's easier to miss it this way. And this is definitely a big downside of Todoist. I know that they're working on fixing this. They've publicly announced this is not insider information, but it may take a little bit of time for them to also support start dates. Anyway, when you actually plan your day, how do you do that in each of these apps? In things, there's a built-in view called the anytime view, which is absolutely amazing. What it shows you is all of the tasks that you've not already scheduled for some day in the future. So something that you could work on anytime. And this is really handy. What I do every morning is I just scroll through all of those tasks and I say, you know what? I wanna work on this one today. I wanna work on this one today, this one and this one. And then I just assign all of those to today and they show up under my today view. And I have a list that looks like this. Absolutely fantastic. And if you build this habit, you will have such intentional and productive days, you won't believe it. What I've done in Todoist is I've created a filter called anytime, just trying to replicate what I did in things because it's such a powerful feature and you can do this as well. It's a custom view, it's a filter and to learn what query I use for this um, and roll in my Todoist course, by the way. But uh, what it does is it shows exactly the same thing. All of the tasks that you could work on that are not already scheduled for the future, yeah? And again, you can do the same thing. You can say, I wanna work on this one today, we're gonna work on that one today and assign all of those to your today view. So that's fine. It just looks a little bit neater in things because it's built in. Now, those are big advantages that things has, the two different types of dates and the built-in anytime view. There's there's also built-in someday view in things, by the way, which is really handy to put in all those tasks that you're like, maybe someday I'll work on these. And you kind of have to hack that together in Todoist. Um, again, I created a label, a tag for it called someday, but it's a bit harder to get those things out of the way in Todoist than it is in things. But Todoist also has a bunch of upsides that things doesn't have. One of those is priority ratings. You might've seen these colors in my today view. Um, I don't know what colors they are. I'm colorblind myself. So maybe this is red, maybe this is blue. Who knows? Hopefully, <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, they're color coded. And what happens in Todoist is you can assign each task a priority rating. So for example, if repair suitcase is a super important task for me today, I can say that's priority one and shoots to the top because by default, your today view is gonna sort tasks by priority. Now it's not actually my top priority. So I'll just set it back to priority four, but this is handy, right? When you're planning your day, you can say, you know what? These are the things that I'd love to get done today, but hey, some of them are a lot more important than others. And you, you can assign those priority ratings and then just start working through your list from uh, top to bottom. And one of the cool things about Todoist, of course, is you can customize the layout. So you can actually, if you wanted to group these by priority and show it as a board. So there you go. Now it's your priority one things, your priority two things, etc. right? If you wanted to do that, but um, I'll just leave it like this and leave it on list view. Now, another amazing thing that you can do in Todoist is integrate Todoist with your calendar. That's not really possible in things. Now in things you can show calendar events. So here, this is a calendar event that I have for this evening, the podcast recording that I mentioned earlier. And if I go to the upcoming view, I can also see, hey, here's a calendar event that I have tomorrow. Here's a calendar event that I have on Sunday and so on. But this is purely showing your calendar events and things. You can't even show your things tasks on your calendar. In Todoist, you've got much more options for that. Todoist integrates with Google Calendar as well as with the popular Mac calendar app, Fantastical, which is the one that I use. So I'll show you how this works in Fantastical. And you'll see that there's a lot going on. Now, all of these scheduled things are actually my events. 
okay those are events on my calendar but you'll see that you can also see my tasks for each day sitting at the top here and also in the sidebar so for today here you go here's the prepare for the podcast recording the video that i'm recording right now and i can go ahead and check that off right here i can check that off right here and that'll sync right back to todoist it might take a second um and you'll see this get checked off and completed soon there you go it's gone uh i probably want to undo that to be honest because i have not yet in fact done that there we go we've undone that but one of the cool things is you can also put these tasks at a particular time so using this integration between fantastical and todoist or if you don't use fantastical with google calendar and todoist is you can time block so i can actually drag this task and just say you know what i'm going to do this uh at this particular time right here at 4 p.m and what that does is if you go into todoist the task well i have to to make sure that is not checked though the task is going to show up with a date so-called due date but i've told you before due date should really be intention or planned dates in todoist at 4 p.m it's a really great way to time block now one of the downsides is at the moment that i'm recording this todoist does not yet support duration of tasks so what i cannot do is make this task longer or shorter it just shows up as like a one hour chunk or maybe slightly longer however that will change soon. Todoist is working on allowing you to set the duration of different tasks. So if you love time blocking, hey, Todoist is probably gonna be a fantastic choice for you very, very soon because you'll be able to do this. Anyway, time blocking is great in Todoist. And it's just not really something that you can do in Things because Things doesn't integrate with your calendar. It's just there's your calendar and there's your to-dos and that's it. Another big difference between Todoist and Things is how they treat reminders. In Things, I can set a time-based reminder. Let's say I'm adding a task. I can say, take a pill. And what I can do is open up the when field and say, tomorrow, 9 a.m. It's gonna schedule the task for tomorrow. And at 9 a.m., I'll get a reminder in the form of a push notification telling me to do it so maybe this is a health thing okay boom I can do that and now if I look at upcoming right here take a pill is here hey there's a reminder at 9 a.m. tomorrow that's it in Todoist I can do the same thing so I can say take a pill tomorrow 9 a.m. same thing is gonna happen now it's scheduled for 9 a.m. tomorrow and I'm gonna get a reminder a certain time before that for example 30 minutes before but I can change this I, I can set multiple reminders and I can change the default as well so there's more going on in Todoist and I can put that under the health area and do the same thing. Todoist has the major advantage that it also supports location-based reminders. So for example, I can say, uh, try out that new exercise Jeff Cavalier recommended. And what I can do is I can add that to my health area, but then I can go here, click on reminders and click a little clock right here and say, no, I don't wanna be reminded at a specific date and time. I want to be reminded at a location. And then I can type the location of the gym that I like to go to. And now what's gonna happen is the next time I show up at that gym, I will get a push notification, boom, try out that new exercise as a reminder. Really handy to have location-based reminders and things just doesn't support that at all. All right, two more things I wanna talk about. One of them is repeating tasks. You can make repeating tasks both in things and to-do's, but it does work quite differently. So for example, if I go to my business area right here, I have a task, review course feedback. I sell courses, people give me feedback, I periodically review the feedback. Now I have set it and I can click right here so that at three months after I last reviewed the feedback that people have left on my courses, I want to see this to do again. So I wanna show this three months after completion. I could also set it on a regular schedule like every three months, but I like to do it three months after the previous time I did it. Now what happens is, hey, I've got this scheduled for Friday. And if I check that off, what's gonna happen is boom, the master task is going to go to September 29th, which is three months from now. So if I completed this task today, Hey, three months from now, I'll, this task will show up again. I'm just gonna undo that. How do you do that in Todoist? In Todoist, you can create a task right here and I have review course feedback and I can uh, literally just type here every three months starting Friday. And this is natural language recognition, really, really cool. Now, what I need to do is I need to put a little exclamation mark after the word every. So I actually have to type it like this, every three months starting Friday so that it's not uh, three months, but it's three months after the previous completion. All this is details that you can learn in my Todoist course, doesn't matter. And then I can save it and that'll work. However, big downside in Todoist is if I now say, you know what, I actually don't wanna get around to this tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna get around to this on Monday. Then the repetition is removed. So that's really unfortunate because you're going to have to reset the repetition schedule every time that you change the due date of one instance, okay? That's an unfortunate thing. But other than that, hey, being able to capture those repeating tasks with natural language recognition is really nice. Okay, the final thing that I wanna mention about things versus to do is is actually quite a big one or a small one, depending on how you look at it, because one thing that you cannot do in things three is change the font size. 
if your eyesight is not so good, if you've got or if you've got a gigantic monitor, uh, it can be really hard to read what's going on in things. It's just the text is one size and you cannot change it. It's a big limitation. Whereas in Todoist, I mean, you can blow things up until they're really big and you'll definitely be able to read it. Big downside for things three. Don't know why that's the case, but it's one thing to be aware of if your eyesight's not amazing. So. Where, where does that all leave us between the two apps? Well, I think Things has a bit of a better design. Uh, it looks prettier. It has that intuitive area and project organization. Things has the separate start dates called when dates and deadlines. Super handy, really easy to plan tasks ahead of time. But some of the downside of Things are that you cannot attach files to tasks. You can't share your tasks with anyone and there's no location-based reminders. Todoist has the big advantage that has amazing calendar integration, custom views. You can attach files to your tasks, there's location-based reminders. However, big, big downside, there's only one type of date in Todoist. And that's really unfortunate because it means that if you wanna track hard deadlines and not always do things at the last minute, you have to hack around that a little bit. Again, that's something they're working on, but who knows whether it'll take them a month or two years to add that feature. So for now, you can't rely on it. Whichever of these apps you use, just make sure you get the most out of it that you learn the ins and outs of it, that you learn a whole workflow for using it. And to do that, you want to check out both my courses. I have a course for Things 3, a course for Todoist, and some free resources that you can find in the description of the video. I have a Things 3 cheat sheet and a Todoist cheat sheet. You can start there and then move on to the full courses. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you have a fabulous day. Ciao.